Pokemon Go is definitely a fad, but there are very subtle things about that program that we can learn from and adapt into other contexts. I think it really challenges us to start to think about the simple things we can do with smartphones that actually enhance the experience that we're trying to create. And with Pokemon Go, I think it's really cool to see that people are becoming more social and more physically active in relationship to this Pokemon game. Uh, and it makes me wonder how we can start to bring things like history or data science and sort of weave them into more socially compatible contexts. As someone who works with data scientists and people in VR and AR, I think Pokemon Go shows us the benefit of having multiple layers in that experience. So you're seeing the Pokemon with the camera, but I think a more important element is the geospatial element where you're walking around and that becomes the gameplay where your physical body is sort of an avatar instead of something virtual on the screen. Um, and I think that movement through space is a lot more intuitive for people, and it may be a better way of interacting with these systems than pushing and pulling on, on peripherals or typing on a computer keyboard. Well, Coulter came and joined the Advanced Visualization Group about three years ago. And when he first came to us as a SPIN student, he had ideas about how to use the Oculus Rift and he came bright-eyed and, and with a lot of vision on how technologies could integrate and come together. And uh, he worked with the Oculus Rift and then we got him involved in the Cypress Institute project for digital cultural heritage. Augmented reality could really provide people a vision of how a place looks today and how it looked a thousand years ago. So it has, augmented reality has a very practical application. And Pokemon uh, has just opened our eyes to what's possible if you take augmented reality and couple it to these very large databases that are visual and that are connected and integrated. But then when you put it on a phone, something that you carry with you, another integrated device, as Coulter described it, uh, bringing together all these different technologies into one. It is really kind of a portal into bringing the reality that you and I experience together with other kinds of data realities that exist. If we were to, to take you know, a 3D scan of the city and we have a full scale 3D version of Nicosia, um, start to populate it with archeological data and even start to do reconstructions of past states of the city, uh, we could have people explore these different configurations and experiences within the city and gain kind of an immersed experience of what it was like. We don't want to just lock this away in a museum. Um, we want to think about how people can interact with this data every day in a very casual context and how they can, in fact, add parts of their own experience into this data set and weave experience on top of it. And so that's where we transition from a museum VR experience into an augmented reality everyday experience that can be accessed through something like a smartphone. But what I hope that we learn from AR apps is that there are these secondary and perhaps more important elements of the app that are about thinking about you know, embodied human experience. My body is an avatar that I move through space and you know, I'm going to go to this old brick building because there's a pokey stop there and I want to get this thing but then you know now I'm here and I'm looking at this building and it's beautiful and I want to know more about it what can I learn like that is like I think what is cool about AR um, so I think in the future maybe more apps will start to think about these sort of external things they can start to do with the very advanced computer with tons of sensors that is in all of our pockets um, and think about how like simple physical real life elements can enhance the experience.